Thank you so much to everyone for being here with us on a Thursday afternoon. My name is Alijan Özdem, and I will be the moderator of this session. I am a sustainability consultant working at Stantec with an educational background of electrical engineering and renewable energy systems, and a professional background focused on photovoltaic systems, especially rooftop installations. I'd like to make some final reminders to our speakers and our guests. Each of our panelists will have 15 minutes for their presentations. Our audience can write down their questions to the chat box during, uh, during throughout the session. We'll wait for all the presentations to end, and then I will forward these questions to the speakers. For sure, I will have some of my own questions for them as well. Dear speakers, please keep your microphones muted until it is your turn to present or answer a question. Dear guests, our session in includes live simultaneous translation, and you can either watch our panel in Turkish or English. As most of our guests are foreign, I will moderate this panel in English. So, today we have an amazing panel on building integrated photovoltaics, where we'll be talking about the big trends on which we need to keep our eyes on that could directly impact businesses, environment, and the economy as a whole. I'm very excited to be a host to these esteemed speakers who are here with us this after afternoon. The flow of our panel is designed to start from the big picture to come down to the domestic situation, and then look at what's waiting for us in the future. Dr. Bjorn Rao will start off our panel, who will share his experiences, examples, and lessons learned from the IP consultancy. Then, Mr. Miguel Herrera Cangas will be the second presenter. He will spend his time to answer the question, what role for BIPV in EU buildings? Our third speaker, Sayin Chida Madam, will use her time to create a picture of the situation in Turkey. The subject of our presentation is domestic design and domestic production. Our final presentation will take a look into the future. Dr. Lucian Crosse will open our vision by explaining us the opportunities and the barriers for BIPV scalability. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce our first guest, Dr. Bjorn Rowe. I hope I pronounced it right, Dr. Rowe. Dr. Rao is a technology manager and deputy director of PV Comp at the Helmholtz Zentrum Berlin. He focuses on research in photovoltaics, especially thin film technologies for PV and related R&D. Dr. Rao is the head of the German consultancy office for building integrated photovoltaics, as well as the Helmholtz Zentrum Berlin representative at the Alliance by PV and member of his steering committee. Dr. Rao argues that the missing link to BIPV deployment lies at the intersection of the architectural community, construction industry, and the PV manufacturers. Dr. Rao, you may start your presentation. Thank you very much for this very kind uh, introduction. Um, I'm going to try to share my screen. Just a second, please. Um, we did try the process already, but this time I'm not sure what you can see. You can see my presentation, I guess. Please confirm, uh, Elikan, is this no, right? Not, not at the moment, no, I can't see it. Uh, you can see? No, not really. I can see your presentation. Okay, I see a little delay also in the broadcasting because I, I'm already switched to the presentation. Sure, uh, Ekin, uh, Ms. Ekin Onum, uh, has written some instructions for sharing your screen. Maybe you can also read them. Yeah, so, uh, okay, I try again, sorry for this, because no during, problem, the test, during the test phase, it already worked well, so. I can imagine these things happen, no, don't worry. Um, uh, if you... I try again. Just okay. so let's have a look. Um, if the problem keeps occurring, maybe we can move on to our next speaker and then come back to you. Yeah. So it's really strange, but let's try one thing. I'm very sorry for this, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, here it is. So looking forward and i guess you can see now um yes i i believe it's loading now yes 
you can start your presentation. Thank you. Okay. So thank you very much. Um, and a warm welcome from my side to this session. I, it's a really an honor to uh, be invited to present here uh, our thoughts about building integrated photovoltaics and uh, especially um, the view from the bridge between the photovoltaics world as well and the world of construction, the architectural world. Um, and I am going to share um, my experiences, examples, uh, and lessons learned from the BIPV consultancy, which we have set up here in Berlin for uh, about two years, two and a half years ago. Um, what, what is building integrated photovoltaics? Let's uh, start with this. Um, I, I think it's very important to really take care of what we are talking about if it is building integrated photovoltaics and it is um, the photovoltaics elements become an integral part of a building. This is not an add-on to the building, it is part of the building. And by, uh, by this, um, the electricity production of the facade or the rooftop or other parts of the building as only one part and the solar modules um, are taking over additional functions within the building skin. And this is the different of, definition of BIPV. And that means if you would remove these um, solar active elements of the facade or the building skin, um, you would leave a functional or at least an aesthetic gap, which needs to be closed again to have a complete building, fine building. Um, what are some arguments for building integrated photovoltaics? First of all, um, we are able to activate previously unused areas for photovoltaic applications. So this um, enables less competition with other potential users like uh, agricultural use or recreation or nature protection, et cetera, compared to free field installations. Um, as we are using different uh, oriented facets of a building, uh, we also have an improved balance of electricity generation uh, with regard to the consumption of the uh, energy within the building uh, or in the course of the day or over the year, etc. Um, we also have the possibility to have additional elements to have an aesthetic design of the building. Um, and photovoltaics already have a very high um, acceptance level within the community. Um, and by using uh, already existing facets, we provide clean energy from the building skin without risks and constraints. And this is really uh, the very big advantage in, in acceptance level in the community compared to other technologies. Um, and for sure, as building integration always means it is a part of a local uh, and individual design of, of, of buildings and uh, districts, etc. So we have a very high potential for local markets uh, in this business. And just two words about the potential and the reality. This is an example for Germany. The BIPV Boost report from 2019 shows, depending on the scenario they are using, um, we have about 26% of the total electricity demand, the current one, the, the one of today, which can be provided by building integrated photovoltaics. One fourth of the entire electricity needs could be provided by BIPV. And if you have a closer look to it, you see on the residential building size, we would have about 700 kilometers square and the non-residential ones about 500 kilometers square uh, on suitable surfaces. That means at least 1,200 kilometers square of surfaces would be available, uh, could be addressed for building integrated footballing. This is really a huge market. Um, some other studies are taking much higher numbers in, into account, even with twice as much as this year. Um, yes, we have uh, a high potential. We have a developing market. We have very nice technologies already. Also high efficiency technologies are available. But nevertheless, we only have about 2% of the uh, entire annual installed um, PV, uh, which is related to building integration. And here do you see two examples, which uh, maybe also show one of the disadvantages of installing photovoltaics onto buildings. It is maybe not the best aesthetic solution, even if it is nice to produce green energy uh, or so on this way with your rooftop installation. Uh, I think there are a lot of examples which provide much nicer solutions for integration. 
And this I want to show you in the next uh, time. Um, and not to forget, uh, just to, uh, to explain you that we really expect an, a boost into the PV market at the moment, especially in Germany, at there are as there are a lot of um, new legislation activities, for instance, that PV on roofs will be mandatory for 2023 uh, on. Um, and I'm sure that a lot of uh, architects do not want to have such kind of uh, photovoltaic installation as we can see here. And the, the good thing is that it is also possible in most of the local uh, rules or new solar laws that uh, also the facet can be used in equivalent to the roof. Some nice examples that you can see what, what is possible. You see here the active town on Frankfurt am Main in Germany. It's not only the rooftop installation, it's also the facet installation. And the, the entire building was set up in, within the city of uh, Frankfurt in a, in a very narrow environment, but it provides really enough of integrated photovoltaics. Um, one of the examples I really like is the International School of Copenhagen uh, for Möller architects. Um, this, uh, this main topic of the school is sustainability and the architects also included this uh, topic of sustainability in the entire surface of the building. So the entire blue facade is photovoltaic active, um, consists of uh, these kind of uh, solar modules, blue ones, you do not see this uh, crystalline cells in, under the blue surface and they have this shindle-like or a differently tilted uh, surface. Very nice experience. Uh, experience. Another way of um, integrating photovoltaics is also using uh, glass facades um, and uh, in, use the photovoltaics for um, uh, shadowing, for sun protection. Um, this is not only a benefit for the people inside the building, it's also a question of design, sorry, so you, you also have very nice shadowing effects inside the building. I come to this later. Alternatively, you can also think about new materials or uh, newer materials. This is, for instance, organic photovoltaics. Um, here we have very high transparencies possible, also different colors, different shapes. We are quite flexible in design, um, but compared to the silicon technologies or the CRGS technologies, this is a a relatively low efficient um, technology. But nevertheless, um, uh, if you want to integrate and design your surface of the building, it's also a chance to use this. Another way uh, of integrating photovoltaic here as an example is really the standard installation into facades. Uh, I like this example very much as it is an example for a typical renovation process of existing multifamily houses. The market is huge. There are standardized solutions. And here in this example in northern Germany in Bremen, you see the blue facade elements on the facade um, are photovoltaic as well as the balconies, um, which is very nice integration. On rooftop, you see also solar thermal applications too. And you can imagine if they have developed such a solution for such kind of building, you can also do in the next step, the renovation of the buildings in the back of the picture, which are uh, from a similar construction. Um, if you're talking about uh, integration of photovoltaics, we have to think about the added value of integration. Then as you can see, and as I already mentioned, um, if it is not, on top of a building, but part of a building, it's a multifunctional building element, even more than a solar module. And um, here are some examples of what is possible. We can think about rooftop installations um, as usual, so not integrated, but we can also think about rooftop integration. So being part of the roof, being part of the facade, being a railing element and a balcony, and sun protection, weather protection installations like overheads or sunscreens. And here are a couple of examples. And you see, especially want to point out um, different sizes, different shapes, different colors. You see even white solar modules are available. Uh, so there's a huge freedom for the architects uh, to install photovoltaics and integrate it into their concepts, their individual projects. Um, if it is an uh, integrated, facet element, you see here that there are a lot of tasks to be fulfilled. So solar modules become an, a building element and they have to also protect for before illumination, for heat insulation, protection of sunlight, noise insulation, 
fire safety is very important as well. Ventilation of the facade safety in, in general, and for sure, as a face of the building, facades also do representative work. So these all are functions which solar modules being integrated into the building can have to fulfill, not all in once, but always some of them at least. And as interesting as the aspect is also that the installation of photovoltaic elements into the facade, for instance, here can be used by, or can be done by standard ordinary building uh, technologies uh, like the facade uh, construction companies are using for metal surfaces or um, glass surfaces, for instance. So, so um, ventilated curtain wall installation, for instance, or something like on the right side, like uh, gluing onto the surface. Um, it's not only a question of um, uh, added function is also a question of added design opportunities. You can see here the, the picture I already mentioned before, a very nice inside um, effects for lights and shadows um, on large scale as well as on the smaller scale here on the right side. Um, you can see um, other kinds of design opportunities like these very, very nice installations in Southern Germany in Freiburg. It's the world first public energy plus building um, and uh, solar installations are on the roof, but also mainly integrated into the facets as shadowing elements. Um, other design opportunities can be um, fulfilled by different colors, different materials, different shapes, different kinds of transparency, as you can see here in this different examples, even the standard rooftop shingles can be uh, um, exchanged into solar active jingles, let's say it in that way. Colors are very important for architects. And here's just a simple example of photovoltaics modules. Uh, in that case, company advances. Um, you see a more or less silver surface of the facade. This is completely solar active. You also see it on different other colors on the right side. So there are a lot of possibilities. Another way of bringing colors into the facade is ceramic digital printing. Uh, here an example from Switzerland, uh, very nice surface. The entire building skin is photovoltaic active, even the roof. Um, very nice project, solar price, solar award in 2019. Um, another example is uh, the Umwelt Arena and also in Switzerland. And I don't want to point out the very nice integration into the roof, but the colored uh, solutions here on the on the main screen now. So by printing uh, on surfaces of solar modules, you can also generate almost all colors and all pictures you want to show and nevertheless keep the solar module active. For sure, there's a reduced efficiency of the modules, but nevertheless, if you would uh, simply present uh, these flags here of the different districts in Switzerland um, on a normal plate, it would even, produce no energy. In that case, it still produces um, solar energy. So I think it's a nice example too. Um, there are a couple of challenges for the photovoltaics industry. As um, you can imagine, we do not talk about standard solar solutions anymore. We need customized solutions, customization in size, shape, transparency, and colors. But we also um, have to think about easy to plan and cost effective solutions, uh, which fulfill a different a certain amount of standardization. So that's a bit of contradiction, but I guess the market needs both as the construction market is quite diverse. Um, the integration into new facet elements is very important for the future as it is not the case that we simply implement solar modules, or standard solar glass glass modules into the facet always. So we need to find also a combination of constructional materials like concrete or wood, et cetera. Uh, and electricity generating elements. Um, the industry uh, also has to take care about the application related properties as facets, for instance, uh, have uh, completely different situations for temporary shadings, even local shadings onto the facade. We also have different legal aspects if it is a solar module becomes a construction element um, and certification and testing needs to be uh, yeah, taken from another point of view as well, and partnerships for sure with the construction companies are required. But not only the PV industry has some challenges, also the architectural world um, needs to understand that they need to gather information about all these 
what is already possible and what needs to be done for the next steps. Um, the uh, should take educational processes, workshops, and qualification um, to in order to also design the buildings of the future. There's a lot of uh, reservation and people need to reduce this strongly as a lot of architects are a bit afraid of electricity generating elements, cables in the facade. Um, so that's why they need to communicate with the, communicate with the world uh, of the solar module manufacturers uh, should be able to uh, change and be aware of changes in the common planning process which is important too, as they have to plan the photovoltaics module as soon as possible, as early as possible in the planning phase. Um, and they should be ready for changes and the responsibilities. And all this, um, the communication and the further education, et cetera, and the consulting see, for this um, architectural world is our main topic in our um, consultancy office for building integrated photovoltaics. Two and a half years ago at HZB here in Berlin, we decided to start with a new team of PV experts, architects, and uh, knowledge transfer experts to um, teach, to inform, and to consult the world of construction, especially the architects, the uh, builder owners, investors, and planners. And we do uh, um, provide workshops and um, further education processes, but we also consult individual projects. Um, this all is embedded into the HCP science infrastructure, which is very nice as architects usually also are interested in the newest technologies. Um, and only with a good network, um, you are successful. So we have strong partners like the Chambers of Architects, we have the BIPV Alliance, universities, and the Sustainability Council and research. Um, we do provide free consultancy, so independent, product neutral, and free of costs for the, for the initial stakeholders of construction and renovation projects. So the main topic is not to um, take part uh, or take parts of the common planning process and provide them for free. It is we want to provide uh, initial consultancy that uh, we want to foster the market and uh, support people thinking about BIPV integration. Um, and we want to foster the dialogue between research and manufacturing on one end side and the architects and the final end users, so to say, on the other side. Uh, collaboration with the universities is very important. So last semester, last year, uh, we were part of two educational uh, processes at universities in Germany and Kassel. Uh, with the architects and in Berlin with the engineers for renewable energies and teaching them individually or in small groups about building integrated photovoltaics, design of modules and facet elements, etc. Um, um, sorry to interrupt. If we can wrap it up in around two minutes, it's been a very enjoyable presentation, but just wanted to remind you. Yeah, as you can see, I'm, I'm switching to the summary. Um, so, so hopefully being in time, um, I just want to, I hope I showed you that BIPV is currently a niche market, but has a very high potential and uh, provides a significant contribution or is able to provide a significant contribution to the energy transition with a very high potential also for local industry and customized markets. Um, that's a high acceptance level in the society um, and building integrated photovoltaics uh, are elements with a multifunctional uh, aspect, so providing construction uh, or, or parts of construction elements as well as uh, electricity production. And it is an transdisciplinary challenge. So the bridge needs to be built between the cultures of construction and energy and BIPV elements need to fulfill the requirements of both sides. This is very important. Everybody has to understand that BIPV is not a solar module, which is attached to the building. It is a building element fulfilling the requirements of the building and producing solar energy in addition and only in that order. Because if the solar module is not working anymore, no matter for the building, but if the building element itself is not working well, uh, then it's really a problem for the building skin. 
And uh, also I hope that due to my examples, I showed you that the existing technologies provide already fine solutions for attractive and efficient integration. Um, for sure, there's a lot of development expected and stakeholders in charge need to be informed about. So thank you very much. And I'm looking forward for questions. Thank you very much, Dr. Rao. It has been a very interesting presentation for sure. And I've taken some notes to forward my questions after uh, all the presentations are ended. Um, so our next guest is uh, Mr. Miguel Herrera Cangas. Uh, Mr. Cangas is a policy advisor at Solar Power Europe, a member-led association that aims to ensure the most energy produced by solar than any other source by 2030 and to reach carbon neutrality by 2050. Mr. Kangas follows the development of the renovation wave, as well as monitoring the implementation of energy performance of buildings and the energy efficiency directives. Uh, he is a coordinator of BIPV and AgriPV worksheets. He holds a BA in philosophy, politics, and economics from the University of East Anglia, and an MSc in global governments and ethics from University College London. Mr. Kangas, please enlighten us with the current regulations taking effect in the EU. Hi, thank you very much for the introduction. I'm going to um, share my screen as well. Hope that there aren't any problems. Great, my screen is frozen now. Don't know if you can see them. I can't hear um, you. I we haven't seen your presentation yet. It's not on the screen at the moment. Sure. Unfortunately, my computer is frozen now. Very sorry about this. Um, maybe while I try to fix it, um, I can say a few words also about Solar Power Europe. Uh, Solar Power Europe is the okay. European association representing the interests of the uh, solar industry. We represent over 240 members across the value chain. Um, including uh, many uh, players in the uh, global BIPV uh, sector. Um, unfortunately, I have a really big problem with my computer because nothing is moving. Um, so I don't know if you could share the, the slides I uh, sent earlier today. Oh, maybe or yes, uh, Ikinanam can share your presentation. Maybe we can ask the organization to help. The problem is that I can't even see what I'm presenting. Sorry about this. I've never had this much of an issue. If possible, uh, maybe it is a connection. If we can move on to Shidamanda maybe and then come back to you later on. Please. Please. If Thank you, you. Maybe you can start your computer by then. Yeah. No problem. Um, then let's move on to uh, Ashi Shidam Besan. Shidam Hanum is the founder of the GTC company, which is active in both in textile and photovoltaic systems. Her expertise in the is in international trade and finance dedicated to making GTC one of the leading garment dye houses in the world and the only one running on solar energy. Uh, Ms. Messan is a plasma uh, physicist and nuclear engineer uh, and starting GTC photovoltaic system divis uh, division as an R&D driven manufacturing and testing facility for solar PV panels back in 2013. GTC photovoltaic system division is the exclusive distributor of Sampi models in Turkey. The floor is yours, Sidamano. Uh, Chidem Hanum, I believe your microphone is muted at the moment. We couldn't hear you. It doesn't show mute. Yeah, yes, it's on mute it? now. Okay. Uh, thank you for the kind introduction. I just would like to correct that uh, we are not distributors of Sunprime anymore. That was in 2013. Uh, we now make our own panels. Uh, I am the CEO of GTC. GTC is a special solar company in Turkey. We are both a cell manufacturer 
and the panel manufacturer, uh, we produce bifacial cells and we make them into our own panels. We produce our panels under a patent in Turkey. Uh, GTC specializes in working with glass from thicknesses as thin as 1.6 millimeters to 12 millimeters. And we only make either glass, glass solar panels or glass ceramic solar panels. So by definition, we are very much um, experts into custom PV and uh, BIPV is a big area for us for the future. Now, Turkey started solar a decade later than Germany. However, BIPV has seen an awakening in Turkey, uh, especially in the last two years. Uh, there are some reasons for this. First is the climate problem. It has made everyone more aware uh, to use solar in all aspects of life. Second is, uh, has been the LEED certificate because as more and more uh, trade uh, interactions required LEED certificates, companies have been searching for ways uh, to incorporate PV into all parts of their factory, not only on the rooftop. And now the third drive is the EU low carbon footprint because now all of the uh, companies that are trading with EU are trying to prove that 100% of their energy is solar, uh, comes from solar. So I do have a presentation that I'd like to share with you. I'm going to uh, make my presentation in Turkish but um, I can always uh, give small translations. Um, I will talk about the domestic production and the domestic engineering we are fully equipped to make in Turkey and the projects that we have taken part in in Turkey. İngilizce'de de söylemeye çalıştığım gibi GTC yerli hücre hem yerli panel üretimi yapıyor. GTC manufactures local domestic cells and domestic panels. Our uh, cell production center is in Nida and panel production center is in Adıyaman. And we were the first R&D center in Eastern Turkey having that title in 2015, and we completed four TÜBİTAK projects so far. As for the cell, following INGOT, we uh, started using wiper slicing, wiper audit and cleaning, uh, back pacification, and iron uh, pressing, sorry, silver pressing is completed in our NIDE cell uh, plant. And actually we have a domestic uh, material ratio of 58%. So here we have at least 70% domestic uh, production and considering that it's 58% uh, cell component, it enables us to 70%. And it is important because the solar panel was first imported in Turkey. And then, then we saw its installation 
with all the materials coming from abroad. However, now we're talking about 35% raw uh, material and local labor. And in the last five years, we have seen a huge progress in solar panels with two uh, companies manufacturing their products like us that took us to 70% and higher in panels. We have our patents. Uh, they are made with glass ceramic panel and our expertise uh, includes a range of glass lamination between uh, from uh, ranging from 1.6 to 12 millimeters. This is very crucial because we are able to integrate solar panels to buildings. This is very important. They asked the speaker to continue in Turkish only. We are able to provide custom PE in Turkey with by using different cells with different configurations and applying them to glasses with different thicknesses. We are able to do even heat uh, a glass uh, F. D, as you see in this marketplace project. We are able to use this on top of the roof. Normally, PVs in their standard applications have a metal uh, framework and a plastic material behind, but our front and back surfaces are made of glasses meaning that when we integrate them to the buildings in terms of fire protection class, we are able to meet this criterion. We have an AA fire uh, safety grade from the European Union and a B1 certificate in terms of fire management in the buildings. And normal standard panels cannot possibly meet that criteria. As GTC, we are able to do uh, coating on the surfaces or facades, or alternatively, we are able to provide Uh, clothing on the facade as a form of uh, shading. That project was applied to the facade of the direct energy director general of Ankara uh, Tedash Institution. It's called bifacial panel application, last class bifacial panel application. And here, due to the distance behind, They are able to generate energy as GTC, like the previous speaker summarized. We want we know that PIP generally generates electricity at a low intensity, but as GTC, we are able to install these systems that can generate electricity at high intensity and we can produce the maximum amount of electricity uh, with, with these applications. That is the glass facade, facade application on the Ministry of Energy. In Izmir, uh, we made this application to Hayat Hotel, Istinya Park, by covering the back facade with a shading material of PV. This is a 25-story hotel. All the wind resistance criteria and fire criteria were comfortably met. 
by our products. This is our cell factory, the outside surface of the administrative building uh, should be, it was designed as glass PV. And if you pay a visit to Nide, you can actually see this factory. Again, these are glass, glass by facial panels. The walls are white in the inside. And the reflections from the white light actually help us generate electricity at a very efficient level. In addition, we are building car parks. If you again pay a visit, you can see uh, in Tav Milas Bodrum Airport car park, uh, there is this application integrated to the buildings. This is a bifacial application as well. And the light reflected from beneath uh, enable us to achieve high efficiency energy generation. Other various applications include the use of PV instead of the classes of the buildings. We cover the greenhouses. We use uh, PV on the balconies. And we use glass roofs with insulation on top of the uh, villa constructions. So here, we aim to ensure that energy, clean energy is generated from sun and introduced to every aspect of our life, just like in the roofs of factories. Uh, we can have it in the boats, in working areas, and even in the separation elements within your bureaus. We can create panels with any thickness and apply them on site, enabling the share of the solar energy, and most importantly, uh, local solar energy production to increase and also we want to export uh, our products to Europe and uh, the world in general. That's why we started our promotion activities for this purpose. Thank you very much. If you have questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you very much, Ms. Chida. Now I'm switching back to English. Giving us your time. Uh, I have the pleasure of seeing your bifacial panels at the Milas Bodrum uh, Airport car park every time I travel there and hope it sets an example to other businesses for similar implementations. Uh, for me, it is truly an art of work. Um, dear Miguel, shall we try your presentation again? Yes, let's give it a go. Just give me one second. Share. Okay, it's looking much better. There you go. That's what how it's supposed to work. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, your presentation. Then um, I don't need to go through the uh, introduction. Thank you very much for uh, the very interesting uh, presentations. Um, and even with the language barrier, we could follow. I think that was uh, really good. Um, today, I want to give you a quick overview about the uh, status of BAPV uh, around uh, the EU um, and about the work that Solar Power Europe is doing to um, promote and ensure that the BAPV can fulfill its uh, magnificent potential that Dr. Rao 
uh, was uh, mentioning uh, before. Because really, BIPV opens opportunities for the solar sector at, at large. Um, as we have been discussing before, BAPV is still only a very small, represents a very small share of the installed capacity uh, in the EU. But it can really support the achievement of climate neutrality, uh, which is the EU's objective for uh, 2050. And crucially, it provides really good opportunities to ensure that um, building renovations um, combine energy efficiency uh, improvements with the deployment of distributed energy uh, resources. And the European BPV sector is uh, very interesting because um, it is very diverse and really innovative um, and has a, a very good starting uh, position uh, to um, continue growing. However, today really in the EU, uh, the what we can say is the BAPV market is growing very uh, slowly. And, and the result, and this is the result of many of the issues uh, in the solar sector in the beginning of the uh, 2010s uh, were caused by very low regard for stability in the policy and uh, financial support uh, frameworks for uh, BAPV. Um, so really towards the end of the noughties, we saw a huge uh, growth driven mainly by uh, support frameworks in France uh, and Italy, which um, when, were they, when they were uh, removed, uh, really plunged uh, the market and, and, and it has not really uh, recovered uh, since. And here you see in the, this graph from the excellent BAPV uh, status report from 2020 by Supsi and the Becquerel Institute, what we are looking at. Um, but the important thing for us is that the, it, today BAPV is uh, at the turning point. And if we uh, overcome a number of uh, challenges and make use of uh, uh, some opportunities, really, we believe that we're convinced that we can scale up BAPV across uh, across um, Europe. And this is just a quick overview of the of the key topics. There are many more. Uh, so I was very happy to, to see uh, Dr. Rao cover uh, many of them uh, in his presentation uh, as well um, that I will go into. So with regards to the cost competitiveness, one of the key things uh, that we see is that we need to um, always consider a whole system uh, uh, analysis, particularly when talking about the cost. What this means is that we shouldn't be uh, looking at the PV element and the construction uh, product uh, element um, separately, but rather uh, understand how cost effective the deployment of a BAPV uh, pro product, which fulfills the uh, use, uh, the which performs as a construction product, uh, is versus standard construction products. And in the graph on the on the right, you can see how different in, across different segments in uh, the BAPV uh, sector, in roofing, but also in uh, facades, you have already. BAPV products, which are uh, cost competitive against uh, standard construction elements. But this is still always not enough. And here, really, the, the key element is the need to scale up both the uh, deployment, but also the production of uh, BAPV products, enabling sufficient economies of scale, which will uh, fully drive and the increased cost competitiveness. One of the key drivers to, for this scale up is, uh, of course, regulatory uh, and support uh, frameworks, which in the EU have uh, traditionally, uh, for the past 10 years or more, been quite favorable for PV, although not so much for, so for uh, BIPD. And here, 
I mean, you you have a number of uh, legislative documents at work, notably the Renewable Energy Directive, which sets uh, ambitious uh, goals for the EU to deploy renewable uh, energy, but also the uh, Energy Efficiency Directive, which simil similarly sets very ambitious goals for the European Union to reduce energy uh, consumption. But probably the most important one for uh, the APV is the Euro Energy Performance of Buildings uh, Directive, which governs uh, how across the EU uh, we are, we see the performance, uh, the energy performance of the building stock and how we are aiming to decarbonize it. And really, I mean, the, the issue with PAPV is that um, this quite ambitious framework to decarbonize, um, formed by the RED2, the ED, and the EPVD, has not really translated into a uh, clearly defined BAPV normative uh, framework, neither across the EU or within the member states. And another important element is that the um, PV and building requirements of standards are really not uh, harmonized. Um, and this creates a very important uh, obstacle to generate sufficient market pool for BAPD. Now, we are at a very exciting moment uh, because the European Union is embarking and implementing the European uh, Green Deal, which, as I said, it is aiming to achieve climate neutrality by 2050. We also now have a new updated decarbonization target for 2030 uh, of reducing emissions by 55%. Uh, and in this context, the, the most interesting uh, initiative at European level for BAPB is the Renovation Wave Strategy, which includes uh, revisions to all every single one of the key legislative documents I um, mentioned just before, and uh, includes um, a revision of the regulation which governs uh, the standards for construction products. So a bit deeper on the, on the renovation wave here, what was really exciting for us was that um, the uh, barriers for BAPV were explicitly highlighted. Um, so the renovation wave uh, aims to reduce building related emissions by 60% by 2030, but also to at least double the rate of renovation in the, in the EU. And within this uh, strategy, the European Commission uh, has committed to map and remove the barriers to BAPD, notably by ensuring mutual recognition of uh, standardization procedures, uh, but also uh, of the uh, insurance schemes, two really important elements uh, to um, create uh, a single market for, for construction products. And, he, uh, and in addition to this, and this echoes what um, Dr. Rao was saying just before, um, to make BAPD happen and to make the renovation wave happen also, we will need a concerted action between the construction sector, the solar sector, and all uh, and, and the whole renovation uh, building renovation ecosystem. And for us, this really means targeting three um, key stakeholders, the architects who make the decisions to use certain types of products or not, the contractors who then have to uh, go on and uh, do what the architects uh, tell them to do, uh, and crucially also the uh, installers. And here in, in the installers is where, where everything crystallizes, um, because a key barrier um, which exists for the deployment of BAPV uh, projects is that many times, if you're talking about a roof a shingle system, um, roofers are not trained to install PV systems. And similarly, PV uh, installers are not trained to install um, roof shingles. And this um, lack of a, a commonality in the skills uh, means that sometimes it is very difficult for project developers to ensure their um, their systems. Um, so to sum up, in, in any case, uh, to remove these barriers, we really need to develop a multidisciplinary approach, which 
room uh, creates bridges across all the different uh, ecosystems. But as, as I was saying before, one of the key uh, elements of uh, the renovation waste strategy is this revision of the construction products uh, regulation. Um, because really today we do not have harmonized uh, standards for construction products in the EU. These, this means that there is a really important barrier for particularly um, SMEs who are developing uh, PAPV products to access different uh, markets. This is a problem across the construction industry, but which uh, hits the PAPV sector particularly hard because um, it doesn't have necessarily the same uh, economies of scale that your larger um, companies might have. So this um, revision will aim at improving this uh, single market and holds the key to unlock sector uh, growth, ensure that building um, that new constructions and renovations uh, are fully in line with the European Green Deal goals and crucially for the BAPB sector, promote product uh, safety. So in, in, in this whole context, we also see a really key opportunity for the EU to take the lead in the manufacture of BAPB uh, products. And here, I mean, it was alluded before as well, we are um, currently having very interesting uh, debates about whether or not uh, about the values of uh, having a standard uh, product standardized approach or more of a customized approach and even something uh, which I find really fascinating the idea of having a mass customization of the ABB product which uh, in essence means to um, be uh, able to produce in large scale BAPV systems, which can be uh, easily uh, customized and cut into different shapes to fit the needs and desires of building owners, architects, or whomever. Uh, in this context, two other key dynamics is the um, flexibility awarded by uh, new digital uh, processes uh, uh, to, to manage supply chains, but also the, the automation, which really um, reduces a lot of the, the costs in um, uh, the manufacture of uh, BAPD products. For the moment, uh, I can, I'm very happy to say that there are two uh, large uh, scale manufacturing projects uh, in the EU. The first one is the Accuro Sun Style uh, Gigafactory, which produces the um, roof tiles, I, which I showed in a previous image, and which manufacturing facilities you can see on the left side of your, of your screen. These um, roof tiles uh, combine, fully combine the power generation with the waterproofing uh, anesthetics. The other one, uh, and I, I found it very interesting to, to see the example use of uh, Opvius, is uh, Armor Group, which is uh, uh, now uh, the same, um, has joined forces with Opvius, which uh, develops solar uh, power uh, films who have a huge uh, potential to be integrated across um, construction products and uh, even more to give any shape, color, and transparency to your um, modules. Maybe to, to wrap up, uh, I just wanted to, to um, highlight a report which we published uh, in 2019 on the role, on the key role that municipal, uh, municipalities can play uh, in driving um, the BAPV market. And this is because as you can see on the right side of your, of your screen, the municipal authorities sit really in the middle of a lot of these uh, different uh, stakeholder uh, groups. They manage sometimes very large uh, quantities of uh, public building uh, stock, but they also have the power to regulate what happens with the private uh, building stock. They are generally very close to the um, industrial uh, facilities and uh, businesses who are commercializing these these uh, BAPV products and crucially they have the power uh, to 
uh, set up efficient local level policies, create regulation and incentives to drive the decarbonization of uh, the building stock that they manage. So that was it on my side. I hope I didn't take too long. Thanks a lot for listening. No, Miguel, it was perfect. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I think my screen froze for a minute there. So I'm sure our audience enjoyed your presentation as much as I did. Uh, we will now move on to the our to our final presenter, uh, Dr. Lucien Croce. Dr. Croce joined Inno Energy in 2011 and is currently European thematic leader of smart cities and buildings. Inno Energy is the innovation engine for sustainable energy across Europe, and it is supported by the European Institute uh, of Innovation and Technology, investing in innovative products, services, and startups. She has a background in chemical engineering and obtained her master's degree from the University of Twente in Netherlands. Prior to Inno Energy, Dr. Kroeser worked in various scientific business and management positions at the Dutch Institute for Applied Scientific Research. She also worked uh, at the Dutch Embassy in Beijing at the Department of Economic Affairs. Dr. Kroeser, what are the opportunities and barriers for BIPV scalability? Um, I believe your microphone is also still muted. Okay, uh, everything is freezing the moment I try to share. So I believe this is the luck of our panel. <laughs> it's a common problem. It is for sure. Let's see if this one works. Can you already see my screen? Um, no, no, not really. Okay, let's try it again. Something happening? We, um, no, we are still not seeing your presentation. Um, maybe I can open your presentation for you if you'd like that. I also made some changes, but oh yeah, let's let's try because this doesn't work. Yes, please. Um, so the event organization has written a message to you. Okay, let's try it again. I'm very sorry. Okay. No problem. We still have time. <laughs> Do you see anything changing? Um, they have written another message. So maybe you should only select one window to okay. share. Let me also open your presentation. Okay, shall I share your presentation? Yes, please, please do. Okay, just a minute. Let me do this. Okay, now. Can you see my screen at the moment? Uh, nope. Oh, yeah, yeah, something is happening. 
Okay, please let me know when to move on to the next slides for you. Oh, perfect. Could you switch to the presentation mode? Um, this is from, I'm opening it from uh, Google Chrome, so maybe. Okay. Uh, I'm yeah, let's not make it too difficult. <laughs> we are showing something. Thank you so much <laughs> for the support. Um, yeah, let's see. Um, I, I want to spend a few words on uh, EIT in our energy. Thank you. Uh, who we are and what we do, because that's uh, giving a better view of uh, from which angle we look at a product group like BITV. Then, uh, uh, well, moving quickly through the opportunities, various and also the value chain uh, a bit quicker uh, because it was already mentioned by the former speakers. I also have a slide about scalability. In our perspective, this is the real barrier that needs to be tackled and some key takeaways. Next slide, please. So who we are and what we do. Um, it's possible to move it up a bit because half of the slide is gone. Oh, Even like this. Uh, okay, I simply uh, keep talking and then let's see what happens. Okay. Okay, so we were founded in 2010 uh, with a mission coming from the European Union, and that's beating the, be the leading engine of innovation and entrepreneurship in sustainable energy. And at that time, we started with three business lines. One was devoted to invest in uh, early stage startups. The second one is investing in product development together with international uh, consortia. And the first is uh, investing in new capital. And that basically means uh, we are investing in new uh, modules for master programs and uh, reskilling uh, modules. And especially the reskilling part is becoming more and more important, especially for the energy transition. All these business lines have a business model that leads to a return on investment. So it's not a grant, it's really an investment. And return, we, of course, we invested in new startups and, and new products. Um, basically, uh, we do it through all, out all the, the energy value chain from production up to demand, uh, looking to uh, building integrated PV. It's part of two automatics within our uh, business and it's followed from renewables and smart cities and buildings. Um, well, we already started in 2010. Uh, uh, that means by now we have an uh, impressive portfolio. Uh, uh, we invested in about 400 startups, uh, uh, 500 product developments altogether. So that makes us one of the largest energy accelerators in Europe, but even globally. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. Um, hasn't it moved to the next slide? Uh, that, the other one? The other, I skipped that slide to stay in time. Uh, ah. So now moving to BIPV, where the opportunities are. And I would like to start with the bigger picture. Uh, um, most is already mentioned by Mikel as well, I think. Uh, over 40 percent of energy uh, consumption is still used in buildings in Europe, and that means that 36 percent of CO2 emissions are still emitted and coming from buildings. So that's uh, an impressive amount, especially if you realize that we need to reduce it to uh, almost zero by 2050. Buildings exist for or have a lifetime of about 50 years, so we really need to start today. Uh, to make it happen. Ah, that's much better. Thank you. Um, and the other uh, uh, uh, uh, item I would like to raise is uh, um, we need to realize uh, it are not just the new buildings. 90% of the buildings are already built today. We need to realize it. Uh, but most buildings were even built before the 1990s. So if, uh, if you look to the market potential, even before BIPV, then the biggest market potential is in the, for the existing building stock. Uh, a bit more specific, looking into uh, PV and BIPV. Uh, uh, well, BIPV uh, prices have been declining for the past 40 years now. 
uh, and the, the PV efficiencies were increasing. Of course, this is PV and not BIPV, but it's affecting the BIPV uh, efficiencies as well. Enabling self-consumption and also uh, um, this, uh, uh, unlocking additional revenue streams for buildings. I, uh, it's an opportunity and a trend for both PV and BIPV, but very specific for BIPV uh, that, that there is a niche market that might even become a, a mass market. That's uh, the buildings where PV is not a viable option. For example, the light roof, roof lightweight roofs, walls, windows, uh, um, and Dr. Rao already showed very nice examples of it. Another trend, new materials and applications becoming available, tunable uh, coatings, uh, <coughs> fire were all very mentioned, uh, lightweight materials so, uh, such as polymer, as construction material, but also as new absorbers. Uh, so it's really uh, opening up new opportunities, especially for BIPV. And another trend uh, that, that is helping BIPV uh, is prefabrication uh, options and automation throughout the construction process. Uh, and, uh, it has been there for a long time, but now more and more we see it implemented. And this is really supporting a complex product such as BIPV. Um, in the lower corner on the right side, I depicted uh, uh, some numbers I extracted uh, from a report from the Becquerel Institute and it shows uh, a forecast of growing BIPV numbers and a growing market forecast. Um, and I'm not sure if everyone can see it on the vertical scale, that's megawatts. That's not the gigawatts of normal PV uh, grow curves. Next slide, please. Um, this is also some background. Um, I already mentioned uh, the uh, decreasing uh, uh, PV prices. And on the left side is a graph that was drafted from uh, the Fraunhofer ESA, and it shows clearly uh, the, uh, the, the price decrease during time uh, as a function of the cumulative production facilities. So this is a very good example of what scale can do for uh, the price of, uh, in this case, PV modules, but also what scale could be uh, for BIPV modules. And it's a, a very nice graph, so you can also use it uh, to uh, come up with the forecast uh, once you start with the production of a PV. On the right hand side, I depicted two pictures. The upper one is installed uh, base for PV uh, until uh, 2020, and the lower one was also showed by Mikel, and that's BIPV. And he already explained the decline after the, the uh, financial crisis in 2010. Uh, but uh, I wanted to, to highlight also the difference between PV and BIPV. PV is already picking up, um, of course, supported by all kinds of incentive schemes, but BIPV is still lacking and behind. Next slide, please. And, and we looked into uh, uh, what are the, the, the reasons that BIPV is not keeping pace with PV uh, deployment. Uh, and we came up with a, well, a full set of barriers. And we picked uh, the most uh, uh, relevant ones, or the, the ones that mo uh, most often were mentioned. And we classified them in four different uh, categories. It's not only technology, it's not only legislation. Uh, we found really four uh, categories. One re uh, related to, to market inefficiencies and a regulatory framework. Some were really financial uh, and economics related. Of course, there are also technological uh, barriers. And an important one is the knowledge informative one. Uh, and the market-related uh, ones, the fragmented value chain, and that one came up all the time. It's really difficult for all the stakeholders involved in a complete value chain uh, to, to, to share all the information in a transparent way to make sure that everyone has uh, all the information that they need, it, that they are aware of what they need, and that uh, the communication lines are going uh, smoothly. A regulatory framework, 
And yeah, there's still some work to do, especially for BIPV, uh, simply because, well, we have a regulatory framework for the construction side, and we have a regulatory framework, especially focusing on energy and energy efficiency, and they are not completely harmonized yet. And in the end, uh, even if you look at national level and compare between countries, the EPBD is uh, European, but uh, how it's uh, uh, implemented on national level results in differences, and it results also in different kinds of certificates. So if you want to, to sell a product across borders, very often you have to uh, go through the complete certification process again. So that, that is really hampering uh, uh, scaling up of BIPV products. Supply chain constraints, um, well, uh, we see it all the time. Uh, limitations in scale obviously results in higher costs uh, and less routine, uh, and thus uh, higher failure rates. Financial and economics, BIPV is still uh, more expensive. Uh, and this results that building owners very often have a bit more uh, trouble finding the capital to pay for it. Um, is it a commercial building owner? Then they have trouble uh, to, to, to, do, to deal with the sustainability. It's an uncaptured value. Sustainability has value, but it does not always translate into increased rent or um, increased property valuation. And of course, uh, uh, well, how to monetize electricity production. Uh, in many countries, it's still not yet allowed uh, to uh, uh, uh, uh, uh, trade between peer to peer. Technological, uh, most were already mentioned, so I will skip them. Knowledge informative, it's the general low awareness of BIPV products. Um, everyone knows what it is, but uh, uh, uh, the variety of products that are available, it's not that easy to get the complete picture of all uh, the opportunities and uh, possibilities. Um, reliable information, a lot of information uh, is available, but where to find reliable information? And the last one, and that it's becoming and more and more severe uh, the last few months and even the last few years is a lack of skilled personnel and training. Next slide, please. Um, this is uh, uh, uh, several speakers in the panel already mentioned uh, that the value chain, it's complex to co uh, collaborate with each other. And I simply uh, included two uh, pictures, the left one, uh, is a picture created by the Becquerel Institute, and it shows all the stakeholders who are involved uh, in producing a, a BIPV product, but also by uh, implementing or deploying it. Uh, and as you can see, uh, it's a, a large number of stakeholders and all of them they need to communicate and the processes need to be aligned. Uh, we tried uh, to simplify it, and uh, on the right-hand side, it's a very simplified version of a construction value chain uh, and, and a renovation value chain. Uh, this, this is really our attempt to make it as simple as possible and still a lot of stakeholders are involved and they need to communicate. So this shows clearly how difficult it is to get a BIPV product uh, quickly implemented. Next slide, please. Uh, uh, Two slides further, please, to number 10. Yes. Um, scalability. Uh, uh, um, we invested in uh, uh, several building integrated uh, PV startups, and uh, the common challenge is scalability. And it's not just uh, industrialization. Uh, or finance, having enough finance to make it happen. It's really a system approach. And it starts with mindset, uh, especially with startups. Um, it, they need to have a shared vision within the company uh, because the, the system approach that is needed. Uh, at the same time, you need to have industrialization at the right level. You need to have the off-takers at the right, the right level. The technology needs to be uh, ready. Uh, the governance, all the pyramids that I uh, depicted in the picture on the right-hand side. And this is the main pyramid 
that we track to see if it's a value, uh, uh, scalable or not, or uh, at what level uh, it is already. Uh, we even developed a tool for it and we call it the IRL tool. So that means the innovation readiness level tool. And basically it's a function of the well-known technology readiness level, but we added market readiness level, commercial readiness level, and societal readiness level. And that's already an indication that scalability, uh, well, it's just one word, but uh, it really takes an effort to get it uh, right. And in the end, it's team plan, execution, and timing. And for sure, uh, BIPV, the timing is right at this very moment. Last, the next slide, please. Uh, the key takeaways. Well, the timing is now. Uh, all the legislation, and there is a huge regulatory push for PV, but also for BIPV. Um, if BIPV becomes scalable, uh, then it can even become a mass market that is price competitive, competitive, but it needs to address the existing building stock, and it should be based on more integrated value chain. Uh, so the offering uh, should be a turnkey, and of course, scalability is the key. Automation and digitization offer new opportunities for BIPV deployments. Uh, it's enhancing value chain collaboration, it's reducing complexity, uh, it's improving accessibility and transparency uh, of data. Uh, legis uh, on the legislative part, uh, still some work needs to be done on the harmonization to make it easier to introduce uh, BIPV into a bigger market, the European market at least. Um, so it's still hampering a bit. And BIPV for sure has a role to play in fully unlocking the potential of decarbonizing the built environment, additional to PV, and the value chain approach is essential to come overcome complexity. All in all, a BIPV has to promise to become a mainstream construction element, but some work needs to be done. Thank you. Um, thank you, Dr. Cross. Uh, many, many useful informations. Um, before we move on to my questions, let me check if we have received any questions through the chat, but I believe not. Um, so we don't have much time, only seven minutes, uh, but uh, I'd like to ask a question to uh, Uh So as Miguel and the others showed some data on the feasibility on BIPV systems in Europe, uh, how about the feasibility of BIPV here in Turkey? And uh, a follow-up question to that is, you have shared some amazing examples with us, uh, which are already implemented uh, around Turkey. Do you think the architects will start prioritizing implementation of BIPV technologies to their new projects? Chidamanam, uh, you are on mute currently. I know of two architects who are working on it right now. There are two architectural houses in Turkey that are very aware of the BIPV current coming. But I think the main drive is the investors. Uh, the big companies who are making new buildings or the holding companies that want to revamp their office towers. Uh, I think the main drive for BIPV will be uh, on the commercial and industrial buildings in Turkey. Uh, um, the housing market in Turkey uh, is still not open to solar. There is not much of motion in there. Um, so uh, I expect municipalities, holding company, um, main offices, and industrial factories to incorporate BIPV for reasons of LEED certificate, for reasons of recognizability, 
and for reasons of public usage and uh, public green energy. Um, thank you very much. And I'd like to ask a question about the future to uh, Dr. Krosa. Um, so are there any hot startups in the BIPVA in the moment? And what do they aim to achieve? Um, because I'm really curious about uh, entrepreneurship on this uh, technology. Uh, like, is the future being designed by large enterprises or can uh, bold entrepreneurs be destructive? Uh, bold entrepreneurs can always be disruptive. That, that, that, that's a firm belief. Um, but especially in BIPV, uh, and we, uh, we are actually following a few uh, at this very moment, uh, some really exciting ones uh, with uh, new uh, coatings that uh, are tunable, uh, easy to uh, implement. PC uh, in uh, Delft uh, it has a, is a good example, uh, can be used on the facade uh, and on windows. Um, another one is um, addressing especially uh, the, the roofs that are not suited for PV, the lightweight roofs, so, uh, the, the industrial uh, roofs that were uh, mentioned uh, uh, just by the forum speaker. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce your name uh, as well. Um, uh, based completely on uh, new types of polymers uh, as construction material. Uh, so it's very lightweight. You can lift it with just one hand uh, and uh, uh, install it as a normal uh, roof. So that, that, that's also uh, tackling the, the problem with uh, other, uh, that, that you need to deal with the installers, uh, the roofers, uh, and name all the, the involved companies. So that, that's quite some interesting startups that are coming up. Bifacial, a lot of companies are working on it. Yeah. That, that is very exciting. Um, unfortunately, we're out of time for more questions, but I really like to uh, have another chat with all of you um, in the future. Um, I do have other questions, like many notes taken during your presentations. Um, I'd like to express my gratitude to all of you, uh, our dear speakers, for their participation in the panel. And of course, I'd like to thank all the, uh, the guests who have spent their time after work hours to be here with us. Uh, we all have enjoyed our time together. And finally, I'd like to thank the Zero Build organization for this great event and also for inviting myself to be the moderator uh, for such an enthralling panel and giving me the opportunity to chat with our amazing guests. Uh, finally, I'd also like to thank the translators for their hard work. And thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you all. Goodbye.